What it do y'all and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm here to bring you guys a full face of YouTubers 2022 end of the year favorites. I know we're basically at the end of 2023 and I am finally bringing this video. But what I will say is that I have something unique in this video in that I've had these products for quite some time. So I really have gotten to know all of these products. I have changed my mind on a couple and there are a couple that like I just, I. I just don't like and I will be getting into the nitty-gritty on why I would recommend and who I would recommend each of these products to I also will have all of the youtubers that I reference in this video linked down below as well as all the makeup that I am using and with that said let's just dive on in because I feel like this might actually be a long video Hey guys, so for today's video, as I said in the intro, we are going to be going through the favorites from YouTubers 2022, end of year favorites, making a full face of the makeup that I currently have. There were some things that I put on my list that I had planned to pick up, never did, but I just filtered it with things that I know people have said they enjoy, even if it wasn't in their actual end of the year favorites. I will have all of the YouTubers list listed down below, um, but yeah, let's for real get into it. First things first is actually this sample. This is of the Benefit professional light primer this was not the primer that i was actually originally going to talk about but it is the one that i have and the youtuber that i follow that really talks about this a lot is angelica nequist this is oh my goodness i don't have much left and it's just like piecing out of the packaging um and she is one of the youtubers that did an actual like legitimate end of the year favorites last year and those are the only kind of videos that I'm using well that I attempted to use for this video so even if I've heard a youtuber mention that they enjoyed a product throughout the year of last year I was trying to focus on their actual end of the year favorites videos because sometimes you say something's a favorite and then you use it more and you're like mm. I was just joking but this is a really nice as it says lighter version of the professional i feel like this is better for my skin type i am combination oily i find that it helps to keep the oilness at bay but it also does lightly set those pores and the issue that i had with the professional originally was the fact that it was just so tightening that i did not like the feel on my skin so i actually would say that this is a really good primer i have a sample which is basically done at this point and i could definitely see me purchasing a full size in the future do i need it now no i have plenty of primers so i'm pretty good on primers but i could definitely see me picking this up maybe during the holidays when you can get it for like you know 50 percent off or something but I definitely am happy that I have this and that I was able to try it out with this little sample size. Keeping it right along with Angelica Nequist again is another foundation that I already had and this is the Makeup Forever HD Skin in 4 in 6 8. She's not the only YouTuber that I remember hearing really raving things from this particular foundation. I've heard quite a few YouTubers really enjoying it. I really like this foundation a lot. I will say that this is not my perfect shade for right now. I'm definitely in my dark kind of uh, summer shade. So I'm going to try to really make this work but the actual finish is a nice kind of skin like finish i find that it has about medium coverage which i definitely enjoy and it really works with my skin type as you can see i got quite a bit of coverage and i was able to really focus on that lower part of my face i'm just gonna add maybe two half pumps really just one pump to my little palette here and just apply the rest to my forehead and just add a slightly more coverage to the lower portions of my face but yeah this is a really nice foundation i find that because it's in this hd line it's really good for photography or even just videography or videos in the sense so i really like it 
I would prefer obviously if I had a darker shade as you can see this is definitely not my shade but it's okay I'm okay with it for right now and this is a really good finish you can see that it's like a I would say it's more on that satin it's not a dry dry matte it's not overly dewy I did use a brush and I do find that in using brushes you kind of can mattify a foundation that maybe is showing a little bit more radiant on your skin but overall I find that this gives a solid medium coverage and it really does give a skin like finish so that's why I enjoy it I feel like I also heard um, Megan Turner talk about this and a couple other youtubers as well I did def definitely would recommend it and I've always enjoyed the couple of base products that I've decided to pick up from makeup forever because they are they have really really good good formulas next is something that i feel like you don't even need me to talk about this this is the nyx bear with me concealer i feel like so many people were raving about this concealer last year but i'm pretty sure the person that i heard about this the most and specifically wrote it down in my planner I just wrote a bunch in my planner. I know Lauren May Beauty loved this. I'm pretty sure, once again, Megan Turner has mentioned this in her end of the year favorites. I feel as though Angelica Nicos did as well. And that's a wide range of skin types. Megan Turner is dry skin. Lauren May Beauty and Leah Janae and Angelica are all kind of combination, but they all have different preferences. So I definitely think that this is a concealer that can kind of reach and target all audiences. I know my base is looking a little crazy right now, but we're going to work with it and hopefully my powders can really help me. I actually don't think I have any powders in specific, so I will finesse with my powders uh i really do like this once again i feel like this is not the perfect color for me for lightening but if i want to do a no makeup makeup look where i just have some concealer concealing certain areas this could definitely be a concealer that i use it is more of that serum texture so it's light it doesn't feel very heavy at all nothing on my base right now feels heavy which i really appreciate some foundations and concealers can just feel thick these are both very liquid very serum like very fluid so it's really really nice the only thing i dislike is honestly the packaging for a concealer i don't like that i have to push a pump i would prefer if this had a doe foot that i could just apply and go about my business but at the end of the day this is not very expensive at all so i'll be okay with the fact that i don't love the packaging for the affordable price to set my under eyes very quickly, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the Pat McGrath under eye powder. This one I happen to have in the shade yellow. I feel like I saw Alicia Archer talk about this in her favorites. I didn't write down who. And this is just, in my opinion, an unreal powder. This just really sets the product that you apply it and it just it blurs it makes it look seamless and you see how i've just gotten rid of just a slight slight sheen but in the end of the day it's it doesn't look extremely matte and that's what i love about this particular powder it sets the product that i want it to set it sets the area i want it to set but it doesn't take away all of the sheen and once my oils start to really project and get going it still does help to ensure that my face doesn't slide off and already you can see my face is looking so much better than it did than it did at the beginning i'm really liking how this is all coming together i am going to go ahead and set the rest of my face with a different powder but i have quite a few cream products and i do prefer to use the cream bronzer that i have um, without any powder under and that is of course the rare beauty cream stick this one i actually have a shade that came out this year which is on the horizon but this was all the rage last year all the rage and for this one in particular i wrote down morgan turner and she really really loves these sticks it's just it's a really really good stick it's extremely creamy you can really let it sit like this and not feel the need to rush to blend it out 
I will say this on the horizon shade when blended out it very much blends into my skin tone and I know a lot of people don't particularly like that specifically for like camera work especially on like my YouTube but in person it really has a benefit because I think sometimes people underestimate the stark differences that we have to do as YouTubers to make things really show up on camera so in my opinion this is giving me a nice little bronze it's not overly apparent and my favorite part about this particular bronzer stick in the shade on the horizon is that it has a slight yellow undertone and if you know me i have a warm olive undertone and i i just love anything with a yellow base on my cheeks i love it and on my lips so yeah very very happy with that and then to set my bronzed areas i'm gonna go ahead and use one of the bronzer powders that a lot of people were talking about last year specifically for this one i wrote down leah janae really raving about this bronzer powder from house labs i have this in the shade deep 11 I love this powder. I have literally been using this powder nonstop lately. And lately, the way I've actually been using this is just applying this in the bronze zones, unpowdered. That way, this literally sets that area and it slightly darkens up this powder even more on my skin tone and because this has such a yellow undertone in my opinion it already works and blends in beautifully but just the concept of having kind of an unset base under the powder helps for it to kind of deepen up on my skin in a way that it will project a little bit more than otherwise I would have used to do it gives a beautiful skin like finish it blends in beautifully and I mean honestly for me there is nothing bad about this formula at all it is a baked gelée formula so you do have to have the right brush to literally pick up the product but after you find the right brush in my opinion it's just beautiful okay really quickly I just went ahead and set my whole face with my Sephora powder I like to do that during the summer because this is darker than a lot of my foundation so it helps to deepen up my foundations to actually be my skin tone for the summer so just so that you guys know and I will have everything listed and linked down below for you all as well next let's go ahead and talk about the cream blush and then subsequently the powder blush that I'm gonna be applying on top for the cream cream blush today I'm actually gonna be using I'm gonna be using a formula that is unfortunately no, long, no longer available it is the item beauty cream blush in the shade I'm crushing I think that this is a great great formula unfortunately I never took the plunge to try the brand until they were 50% off on Sephora and lo and behold that happened because the brand was going under but this is a really pretty buildable cream blush it does give you a matte kind of finish but it's not a dry dry kind of flat matte in my opinion there's still some life to this matte which i appreciate i also just really love this color it gives me a nice kind of pop of pink on the skin i will say that the actual product it does get like a form of hard pan so you really have to have the right brush to pick it up or just like agitate the product once again just having the right tools are really essential with any type of makeup application but some of these more interesting formulas unique formulas I really recommend having some really solid brushes but I do enjoy this formula and I do enjoy that shade I know fortunately like I said it's just no longer available something that technically is no longer available in the actual packaging but i do believe similar colors if not the same colors are still available is the pat mcgrath blushes so this is another formula that was really really raved about i didn't say morgan turner recommended the item beauty cream blush and charlotte hillcroft recommended pat mcgrath blushes charlotte hillcroft loves pat mcgrath and this was one of my favorite blushes before she came out with 
the latest range of blushes and what I like to do with this particular palette is I literally go back and forth between the two colors and I just apply them and so it just works perfectly with the cream blush that I applied today that's why I just went ahead and reached for this I will go ahead and douse some of this <laughs> blush so I don't look so clownish but this formula is really really nice I enjoy the formula I love this particular palette in general because I can get used out of every last shade which is very hard to find I find with some cheek products specifically blush palettes and I just appreciate that I can get used out of all of them so yeah big ups to that absolutely happy to have that highly recommend that so far i would highly recommend all of the products that i have applied there are some products that maybe i won't recommend and actually we have the next one coming up and that is cream highlighter i don't have a particular setting spray so i just use the one that i'm currently panning but the cream highlighter that i wanted to talk about is this one from tarte and this is the maracuja Ju juicy glow in the shade amber glow and this if you follow angelica nequis is something that she always recommends and for me this is not a favorite this is not a favorite i personally would not recommend this one which is honestly the first of all of these recommendations or favorites from other youtubers that i would personally not recommend that said i'm not going to say that it's not something that should have been recommended by her or whatever that for me personally this is not a favorite and it's purely because of the application i think that the shade is really beautiful i think that the glow is really nice but for me the concept of having to use a sponge to get a decent application for this product i just don't appreciate honestly personally this is a thicker cream and you do have to warm it up or shear it out with a sponge warming it up with my finger i felt like still it got really choppy at least the way that i applied cream highlighter I do also wear glasses and I find sometimes if my mirror is not very close to me or if I'm not really really paying attention it can just look choppy on my cheeks so the application of the sponge with this product just makes it to look a little bit more seamless so although you may see my cheeks right now and say girl what is you saying in my opinion that's just too much I would rather reach for my merit cream highlighter stick in the shade citrine 110 percent more you can rub it with warm it up with your finger or you can just apply it off of the stick and then tap it out in my opinion that just is an easier process and i've always been one to advocate easier application of my makeup so i can look be and look cute and blah 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 over the harder applications so that's my opinion on that and another one that i'm kind of so so about is the one from unearthly cosmetics and this is the low light and i feel like this is from heather austin yes i wrote heather austin down for this and a lot of people have actually recommended this to me i've even had one of you guys recommend this to me this is a multi-chrome duochrome highlighter palette that has a tan um base to it which is very unique i've never found one that had that type of base and although i appreciate it for me the decision to kind of not be in love with this particular highlighter palette is twofold. One, I have so many uh, types of highlighters that are multi-chrome, duochrome, both in single pans and palettes. This just kind of to me was too little too late for my personal collection. And then secondly, it just, I mean, it's nice but if i'm not constantly wearing these types of formulas right now which i'm not it's not going to hit the way that it hit me you know 2016 2017 when i was living and dying for this type of formula so that's the main thing and also i just find like there is a lot of product in this palette like this palette gives you a stupid amount of product to the point where you should only have this if you are either a makeup artist or you are never going to buy another highlighter in your life because you pick this up 
So those two reasons, to me, it's just, it doesn't seem worth it. Is it great quality? Yes. Great quality application is good. I like the undertone. As you can see, there's no weird casting. It looks good. I might have not blended the cheek area, but I'm going to go ahead and calm my cheeks down anyways because of the blush application. But still, in the grand scheme of things, to me, this is a solid formula. Great. But was it needed right now for me? Not so much. So I'm just going to spray again. As you guys know, I like to spray quite a bit to make sure that all the powders, the creams, everything really become one by the end of my look. Okay, I wanted to zoom in so we could do some of the more fine details now that we've gotten, you know, pretty much my whole base done. And let's go ahead and finish off the lips and then we can focus on the eye area, shall we? As for lip liner, I wrote, I wrote down a Morphe lip liner because of Heather Austin. I never ended up buying that. But a formula I know a lot of people rave about, I can't distinctly think of who and if it was this year or last year is the Makeup Forever Artist Color P Pencil Liner Formula. I've said it once and I will say it again. Makeup Forever does solid, solid releases. And for me, if there's ever a brand or a product that you want to last and to really give you that like makeup artist aesthetic and vibe, go to Makeup Forever. They are quite literally a makeup artist brand that just so happens to be available at Sephora for the normal consumer to pick up. And so I find that a lot of times you really can get solid products. They may not have the most fancy packaging and it may not be the most up to date products, but what you do know is that every product that they release is gonna be solid. So I would highly recommend that formula and I feel like a lot of YouTubers have recommended that formula as well. And then for the actual lip product, I wrote down the makeup, the By Mario Lip Plumper in Honey Glow. Once again, last year I feel like was really the year for this particular formula from By Mario, let alone the brand really really was the it brand last year so this is i believe a newer shade from this year but i'm just going to use it because it's my favorite shade that i have and it's a brown in my opinion you really got to make sure you blend in that lip liner if you are not a fan of that stark lip liner and then a lip product because this lip product does not have a lot of color it's really all about the sheen and then a slight amount of color. But overall, I like it. Lip plumping aspect, you get a slight tingling of that mint. But in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing really to write home about. So for me, it's comfortable enough. And honestly, I didn't even know that it had that plumping element when I picked that product up. I was just really excited for a bullet lipstick that had that glossy effect. Very similar to the Huda Beauty Cream lipsticks. Uh, the only thing about this is you cannot wind it up all the way or you, you just are out of luck with the product because it's so soft that once you wind it up too much it's going to be ruined and i forgot to say that is the same thing with the tart which is another reason why i'm not a huge fan because you you really need to slowly and just very lightly push the bottom of this to get more product to come out because if you bring it out too much you've ruined your product because it's not going back in the packaging. So those are definitely some pet peeves personally for me when it comes to packaging. I don't like packaging like that, but sometimes you get what you get, you know? You just get what you get. So as for brow products, one of the things that was highly recommended was this particular brow pencil. This is the Gimme Brow Volumizing Pencil. And Depending on the way that you do your brows, this is definitely a very, very good brow pencil. I just need to sharpen mine really quickly. And while I do that, I can talk about it. The positives with this particular, oop, I have clearly not sharpened this in a while because I just ruined, it doesn't look cute, but it's okay. Um, one of the positives with this particular brow pencil is that because it is so chunky 
you don't really have to take as many strokes to get the product on and it's also extremely pigmented which once again depending on the way that you do your brows could be an extreme positive you also i wouldn't even say to me that i see any volumizing fibers to me it's just a thick pencil but benefit is known for their brow products for a reason they really are but because this is a halfway decently creamy brow product and because it is so big you really can't be precise and you can get very dark brows very quickly so that is definitely something to know for me lately i've been really into kind of a more feathered brow and one where you can see just a little bit more drop not drama but variety in it makes it look like there's a little bit more texture because i use different colored products in my brows i also use a finer product but if you sharpen the pencil with a sharpener that doesn't break it and you also have common sense unlike me you can get the best of both worlds with this product you just have to be more careful because the actual point may not be as sharp as you may want it you know so there is that but what i'm gonna do is just brush this in quickly and yeah leah janae was the reason that i put this in this video and i think i did pretty good on making the brows similar they're both dark for what i've been doing lately but it is all good and in the event that you care i have this in the shade 4.5 out of all the shades this is the shade that i would personally recommend for me i really like it and then of course for brow gel angelica nequis loves this patrick ta brow gel i've said it once and i will say it again for this brow gel it's not a favorite it's not a favorite of mine I think it's okay but if i'm comparing this to the too faced to me the too faced brow gel definitely easily wins i just don't like this one nearly as much but it is what it is i will say that it clearly lightened up my brow which i 100 percent appreciate it does though have like strings because of the product and i don't like that and those strings kind of get all over my face and my brows and i just i don't like that i also don't i wouldn't say i don't feel the product but i don't feel the product when i'm applying it and that is not a favorite of mine i want to feel that i put the product on and that string is driving me insane there's like a string over both of my eyes because of the application anyways um i don't really feel the product what i will say though is if you give it some time and really work that product through your hairs you can get a nice feathered effect i just don't like having to do all of that for me i just want to get it in my brows and go about my business and preferably not have to deal with any of those random strands going all over my face but you know my brows look decent are they my favorite no but it is what it is and yeah this is another product that i honestly that i just i wouldn't recommend and yeah not my favorite but it is what it is okay so as for primer i did not take the time to write down an eyeshadow primer so i'm just going to use my about face i do know that other youtubers recommend this particular primer and i do believe it was popular last year so we're just gonna rock with that we're just gonna rock with that is definitely a favorite of mine you guys know that you pretty much hear me non-stop using that primer and yeah the day that that primer dries up or is done i'm gonna be sad a hundred percent but for my eyeshadow palette another recommendation from charlotte tilbury 
Another recommendation from Charlotte Hillcroft is the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. This is actually one of my favorite Natasha Denonas. I just love the tones. These are all very much medium to dark tones. So there's not one shade in this palette that doesn't work for me. And I find with her palettes and a lot of just influencers or creators that are of lighter skin tone, of course they want something that's gonna work on their skin tone. And so that's their, you know, basis. And so for me, the concept of finding a Natasha Denona palette with all of the shades working doesn't happen very often. So I absolutely love this palette. And I'm just gonna kind of do a very simple look. There's not gonna be anything crazy dramatic about it. Start off with Familia. And I'm gonna put that all in my crease. Okay, so that is Familia blown out in my crease. This is a really, really beautiful kind of crease color for me. This could be an easy one shadow look or even kind of two toned look, depending on what I'm thinking about doing. And I love that it actually shows up and I can really make it dramatic. What I'm going to do is just take a bigger brush and just brush out my edges this is a bigger clean brush and it's stiffer so it really works to get those edges nice and clean especially because i wanted to bring that shadow up so high without having to do like a transition color or something so that's a trick of mine if i want to do that without using a transition color i will use a clean stiff brush to just blend out that edges and in my opinion it looks a lot more seamless than what it did beginning then i'm just gonna go ahead and go into a little bit of the black is black but a little bit of that brown because i don't want it to be too dark i'm just gonna tap in between and we're just going to deepen out this crease next let's just go ahead and go with some lid shades for me I tend to use my fingers that's just how I like to do my lid shades I'm gonna go into this duochrome vision I really like this shade this is one of the shades that I predominantly use in this palette it is a purple to like lime green shift and I think it just looks beautiful I think in camera you guys only see the purple but i see the lime green hopefully at some point throughout this video you guys can see both shades okay so i'm looking real dark real sultry i'm loving it and i'm just going to pull a pencil brush really quickly and i'm gonna lighten up my inner corner with one of these shimmers I think I'm going to go into the shade Thrill, which is right here. And this is going to help to just brighten up this look a little bit. And I might actually throw this a little bit on the lid as well. Just to bring some lightness, I'm just going to throw it like right here. Use my finger. I just want to bring just a little bit more lightness because I feel like I got real dark real quick, which isn't a bad thing. It just was not what I was planning. Not at all. Okay. And then only two more things to talk about. As for the mascara, the mascara that was recommended and I wrote down was the Tower 28 mascara. And had it not taken me forever and a day to do this video, I would have had that to show you guys. But I've actually already finished mine. I actually grew to enjoy that mascara after it dried out just a little bit for me. I just didn't like it on the initial application, but once it dried out, it was nice. The mascara that I'm using right now is from Yes Style. It is the Himish range. I really, really like this mascara as well. The difference between these two mascaras is this one is definitely uh, more volumizing. 
Whereas I feel like the Tower 28 really focused a lot more on the Tower 28 really focused a lot more on lengthening, in my opinion. So definitely keep that in mind. When it comes to mascaras, I find that it's so important to really review them after you've worn them for quite some time, if not even finish the whole tube. Because some mascaras, they're really good, but they're just not worth it because they dry out way too quickly. So yeah, definitely I enjoyed the Tower 28 towards the end, not necessarily the beginning. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the fact that for lashes, Angelica Nikwas recommended the Kiss Ruffle Lashes and from what I can remember those are like a half lash either looking full lash or a legit half lash. This is a half uh, a full lash that I got on the re recommendation of Angelica Nikwas I think last year but it's not the ruffles it is instead the Ardell 371s I've linked them before I've talked about them before but I wanted to officially do it here it is a really nice kind of outer V contour lash so in the event that you have something as I do today that is a very dramatic eye look and you want to really elongate your lashes or your eyes to kind of work with that eye look definitely would recommend getting a similar lash if not this exact lash and I'm just going to go ahead add my glue apply these on do any final touch-ups that I feel I need to do and then I'll come back so you guys can see the finished full look and we can kind of talk about some of these recommendations because at the end of the day for me it was really important not only to wear these products and try them out but now since I've had all of these products for so long I really want to talk about the benefits and you know the cons to really listening to a youtuber's end of the year favorites okay guys so the sun was just setting a bit too much towards the end of my original clip so i did go ahead and put on my studio lighting just so that you guys can see what i'm looking like right now and i must say I really like how this look came out. It looks beautiful. It looks sultry, mysterious, dark, and just overall Blake friendly. Like this could be a look that I actually intended to do even though I used some products that not all did I love. Some I did, some I didn't. Let's run through the highlights very, very quickly. As far as the base products, which consist of the primer from Benefit, the Makeup Forever foundation and the NYX concealer, I'd recommend all three of these. I like all three of them. I appreciate the recommendations from the YouTubers and they have my stamp of approval for whatever that is worth. The, the last base product, of course, is the powder. And that is another one that I would definitely recommend. It is an under eye setting powder from Pat McGrath. I've already showcased this before on my channel. Definitely, definitely really, really like this one. When it comes to all the cheap products, I like both of the bronzers, both of the blushes. It is the highlighters that I would give you guys caution on. In my opinion, if you are not a fan of applying your cream highlighter with a sponge, I would not recommend this one. And if you already have a whole bunch of multi-chrome highlighters, I wouldn't recommend this one because it's unnecessary. Is it good? Yes. This, I'm, but this good, it's great quality. It's nice. I like the undertone. It's just, it's unnecessarily big. Like I wish that you got like a third of the product for all three shades or all of the shades. That way it just felt a little bit more reasonable to actually bring into my personal collection. The lip products, I think both are astounding and great. I would highly recommend both. I, I enjoyed them both. The brow products, I think they're both okay, but you should really only pick them up if they work for your aesthetic and your vibe. And it's quite easy to tell. If you are somebody who has like bushier brows and you like that aesthetic, then yeah, this pencil may make it easier for you to fill in your brows quickly and efficiently. If you are somebody that doesn't like to feel your brow gel, that's the only reason I would tell you to get the Patrick Ta. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. As for all of the eye products, 
I like them all as well. I love my mascara, although I do enjoy the Tower 28, so we're gonna pretend like that's what I was holding up. I really do enjoy that mascara. As for this eyeshadow palette, like I said, this is my favorite Natasha Denona. So this was without a doubt an easy reason to pick this palette up again. I absolutely love reaching for this. And for these lashes, I actually enjoy them. I haven't worn them a lot lately. I've been really reaching towards my Juvia's Place lashes, but these are great lashes as well. They're nice. This is my first set I bought this duo and I've worn this first pair a lot I haven't even had to dip into the second pair so that really tells you how the quality is and it is a clear band which I personally prefer so yeah overall for me when it comes to these recommendation videos at the end of the year that youtubers do I definitely think there is validity in following them and picking up products from them but I would caution you to not pick up everything that one youtuber shows you I would say if there is a product that you are looking for or interested in picking up and a youtuber puts that in their end of the year favorites typically that means they've had it in their collection for at least a month minimum which means means they've really been able to test out the product and really get their opinion so for me that would be the reason why I would say yes you can use those as a guide but you know as I say with anything don't take one youtubers opinion as law and shop around get more opinions make sure that they have the same skin type as you maybe even skin tone or complexion maybe the same undertone really really just take all of that stuff into consideration but I don't want to ramble on too too much at the end of this video I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts after really going through these products I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial for this eye look and of course the base routine as well and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.